Hey fam, you're welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Faye Songo and you're welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking on why you should get serious with God in university or college. So a while ago, I was going through my YouTube analytics and I realized that a huge percentage of my viewers are in the age range of 18 and 24, which is the average age in the university or tertiary institutions generally. And so I feel that this is a topic that you guys will be able to resonate with. And I actually just want it to be more like a heart-to-heart -heart talk where I'm just going to be sharing some things from my heart with you guys and basically just expressing myself to you about this matter so without wasting much time let's get right into the video so before we start let's just get something clear the best time to get serious with God is now so don't think that oh I'm not in the university yet or, oh I've graduated from the university or oh I'm 10 years old or I'm 20 years old or I'm 93 years old the best time to get serious with God is now so don't think that you are too young or too old to start to seek and know God so now let's talk I realized that that the reason why a lot of us don't want to get serious with God especially when we're young is because we feel like God is going to make our life boring we feel like we'll not be able to enjoy life like we're meant to we feel like we'll be left out of some certain things you know because we are Christian and I have even met people who will say things like oh they are going to live their life they're going to do everything they want to do then when they are getting older or when they're about to die then they'll start getting serious with God or when they're on the sick bed then they'll just say the prayer so that when they die they go to heaven but you see i realized that the reason why we would be thinking that way is because we focus more on the things that we won't have rather than the things that we would have but when you actually stop to consider the two and weigh the difference between you know the things that you would have and the things that you won't have you would realize that what you would have is going to be so much greater than what you won't have what you feel you are losing is not even going to be compared at all to what you would be gaining i know while i was ruminating on this there was a scripture that the holy spirit brought to my heart and that is matthew 13 verse 25 and 46 so it's a very short parable that jesus told about a man who was in search of choice pearls and he saw one that was of a very great value and scripture said that he sold all he had to buy this pearl so this man literally sold all his possessions just to get this one item and now in this present age that would just be something like a man just selling his house selling his car selling maybe he has a business selling his business selling like basically everything that he has just to get one item so this man didn't think oh my beautiful house or oh my amazing car he might have actually even thought that way. or you know he would have remembered that this spell that he seeks to buy is of a much greater value than all his possessions combined and that's why he didn't see selling his possessions as a sacrifice but even as a good investment and why is this because he came into an understanding of the worth of that spell and so when i was still thinking about it and i was just imagining how people would have reacted to what the man did like people have walked up to him and thought that this guy was crazy like why would you sell all your possessions just to get one item i'm sure some people will have even walked up to him and advised him that wait are you sure you're making the right decision it must have looked like a very foolish and stupid thing to do but because this man knew the worth of what he wanted to get i'm sure he would not have counted the advices of others as something that he should even consider and this is the same thing here you see when we truly come into the knowledge and the understanding of all that we will receive when we receive the life of christ and when we also give our lives to christ we will truly see that that nothing can be compared to it our eyes will be open to see that he is the one that truly really matters and those possessions those friends those ideologies those things that we felt we could not do without or that we used to hold in such a high esteem in our heart we would see that it's so worth it to actually discard each and every one of those things to seek god because a day is going to come that this world and everything in it is going to be destroyed so all the money the fame the cars the house everything that we feel we can't live without is still going to be destroyed one day or maybe you would have left this earth before that happened but the fact remains that these things are not going to last forever and when i really came into this understanding my eyes were just open to see that the things of this earth are not as valuable as we esteem them to be the things that we see as so valuable are actually not that important but then there is a way to store up treasures for yourself treasures that cannot be destroyed with rain or fire treasures that cannot be eaten by moths or rats treasures that will last forever but these treasures can only be found in jesus christ and this brings me to the next thing that i want to say it is only in jesus christ that we can find eternal assurance okay so death is a subject that we tend to shy away from until it is right in our faces but i believe you must have experienced the death of a loved one or a friend or a relative or someone that was dead to your heart at least once in your lifetime and it is only in times like that that we actually stop to consider the superficiality of this life how everything is still going to end one day how you are going to die one day i'm not here today to scare you about hell or anything like that but this 
this is just something that is inevitable each and every one of us is going to die one day so does the thought of death scare you or you just try to brush it off and try not to think about it too much but then whether you think about it or you don't think about it it is still something that is going to happen now some people claim to be atheists and believe that there is no god but do you actually think of what happens when people die at least you know that people die right so when people die what happens to them have you really stopped to think about it before the death of death also used to scare me i will always think things like when i die what is going to happen to me where would i go so whenever i thought of death or i thought in that area which i even tried as much as possible not to i would always have this fear of oh, what is actually going to happen to me but you see when i came into christ i found an eternal assurance that can never and will never be taken away from me i am no longer scared to die the thought of death doesn't send chills running down my spine i am confident that no matter when i die i am not lost and where did i find this confidence in christ jesus so death itself is just more like a doorway into eternity and believe it or not the amount of time we spend or we can spend on this earth is so little compared to eternity and we can only spend eternity in heaven or in hell but please do not accept jesus just because you are scared of hell it is so much more than that but the truth is when you stop to think about death and you still find out that you have this fear of the unknown you have not found that eternal assurance that assurance can only be found in jesus christ as i said earlier i can stand anywhere to say that i am not afraid of leaving this earth because i know where i'm going after but what about you now one thing i also realized which is another major reason why we don't like to get serious with god especially in this stage of our lives is because of the fear of others peer pressure what people say how people look at me and all those kind of things actually from you know fear of how people will perceive you but see eh, you have to come into the realization of the fact that you are the one that is normal now imagine if a fish that is inside the sea is getting shy or embarrassed because other fishes are having fun in the sand now those fishes that are having fun in the sand they are house of their natural habitats fishes cannot survive without being in water so they might be having fun in the beach they might be having fun in the sand but eventually they are going to lose their life so imagine if that fish that is in the sea is now getting embarrassed because the other fishes are in the sand and it now goes to join them out don't do the same thing when people are making fun of you for being too spiritual if anything that should even just create a greater desire in your heart for you to also bring them into that same understanding that you have come into because the fact remains that it is only jesus christ that can give you the satisfaction that your soul craves for god is the creator and we are the creation and the creator has put a hole inside of us and i'm just saying that figuratively that nothing else apart from the creator can feel so you might think oh when i get that money i'll finally be satisfied or when i get that fame or when i get that influence but i'm just here to tell you today that you can have everything in this world ask solomon solomon was someone that literally had everything that a man would ever ask for he had money he had fame he had influence he had wives he had concubines he was like the king of the whole world at that point and then this same solomon towards the end of his life he realized that everything is vanity now let me just talk as pertaining to being on campus which is actually the main point of this video so one thing i can testify to is that there is an atmosphere that is found in university that makes it so easy to seek god and i realized that this is not even something that is peculiar to a particular country or a particular continent but all over the world there's just this spiritual atmosphere on campus that makes it easy for you to develop a relationship with god and my advice for you today is to take advantage of it so while we're on campus we are not so so busy yes we may actually be busy but you can't compare it to someone who has graduated someone that is working in nine to five you can't compare being a university student with being a parent with kids that you have to take care of and also have a job and so many other commitments here and there also while we're on campus we don't have so many responsibilities just like what i said most of us don't have kids yet most of us don't have people that we are responsible for yes there might be exceptions but a larger percentage of us are still relying on our parents or on our guidance for sustenance and then another thing i realized is that the decisions that we make especially in this stage of our lives go a long way in showing how our future will look like and if you don't really come to know god while you're on campus it will actually be a bit harder after you leave campus because the convictions that you form in your heart at that point in time of your life are actually things that are going to drive you for the rest of your life so my advice for you today is this find a community of people burning for god and join yourself to them also seek to 
know God for yourself. This is so important. Don't rely on assumptions. Don't rely on what others have told you about God. Seek Him for yourself. Don't just let your understanding of God be based on what people have told you about God. Spend time in prayer. Spend time studying God's word. Because the best way to know a person is by spending time with the person and hearing what the person says. So in the same way, the best way to know God is by spending time with Him in the place of prayer and hearing what He says through His word. And now to round this up, I could have come to tell you guys today that, oh, just accept God. It's going to be just rosy and beautiful and just amazing. But the truth is that I will be lying to you. Trust me, there are some amazing, in fact, a lot of amazing experiences that you would have by virtue of knowing God. But the fact is that you are also going to face persecution in that sense. You know, friends are going to leave you. All sorts of challenges will come. It will seem like the devil will just want to direct his attention on you. It's always so funny that it is the moment that we decide to get serious with God that it now seems like all hell is let loose on us. So don't let that hinder you. You know, maybe even your parents, your parents can call you and tell you things like, I sent you to school to study and not to go to church. You know, and statements like that. But don't let that hinder you. You know, these things, let your assurance be strong in God. Always bring to your remembrance that there is always strength made available for you in Christ Jesus. And also remember that the Spirit of God is an ever-present friend. He is always there to help you, to guide you, to show you what to do and help you to do it. So don't wait till you are faced with a challenge or a problem or an issue before you come running to God. Start to seek Him from now. Start to build a relationship with Him from now. And take advantage of this time that you have on university to build a spiritual foundation that will help you for the rest of your life. And I just sincerely pray for you that is watching this right now. That that desire in your heart is still the more. You seek and you find God and you are strengthened to serve Him for all the days of your life in Jesus' name. And so far, thank you so much for watching this video. And if the video blessed you, remember to leave a comment and give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to join the family. So thank you once again for watching today's video. Until next time, bye-bye.